Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about aortic stenosis um, and aortic valve disease. It's not a lecture, so I won't be going into types of aortic stenosis, what's the pathophysiology, how you diagnose it, how you treat it. Those are all the things that can be covered in a formal lecture, but in the next 10 to 13 minutes, um, the idea is to give you an overview as well as some high yield clinical as well as board review tips that can stick to your mind uh, and help you um, understand this topic um, easily when you read uh, the full text or, or a lecture. So with that we start with aortic stenosis, the basics. Um, there are two types of aortic stenosis that can hap happen. That is, one is like if they have any kind of a congenital abnormalities and the most common is the bicuspid aortic valve and then another one is called degenerative uh, where it is like a senile as we all age increased calcification there are other kind of aortic stenosis like um, related to rheumatic heart disease infective endocarditis certain systemic diseases but again as i said i won't go into details of all that this is to just to keep it very simple and very very high yield clinically relevant things that we'll be talking about so let's talk about the bicuspid aortic valve so the aortic valve in a cross-sectional area looks like a mercedes benz sign so it's got a left cusp right coronary cusp and non-coronary cusp so what happens in the bicuspid aortic valve is usually there are two cusps and even if there are three cusps, two of them are fused so that anatomically it is a bicuspid valve. One of the board question and thing that you remember is most of the time it is a fusion of the left and the right, right coronary cusp that is common in about 80% of the times. So if you have a congenital bicuspid aortic valve, most commonly it's the fusion of the light, left and right coronary cusp. And the way I remember is that the non-coronary cusp, the non-coronary cusp does not involve in the fusion. So it does not. And for non-coronary, and it is non-fusible or non-fusion cusp. So it stays independent as a cusp. And the other one can be fused, leading to a bicuspid aortic valve. A small kind of a hint for you to remember in the future because that can come up on some of the exams. With that, we'll move on to how we work it up, the aortic stenosis. And by far the most important thing is your examination and history, physical examination, which is the key. That can trump everything. So if you have an echo, and your examination says, well, this patient is not having aortic stenosis, you better readdress that or look into that further because, again, as I said, the aortic stenosis, the most weightage in this pyramid is your history and physical examination. So what can you ask the patient in this? For example, some of the things that you can ask about them and they might know about a murmur as a kid they might have shortness of breath they get tired easily um, but these basically are the three things that you really have to ask the patient so chest pain heart failure and angina and why is that because these are the one which are the red flag Anybody with aortic stenosis who has one of these chest pain or shortness of breath, uh, angina or dizziness or syncope. So I'll combine angina, chest pain with that and syncope as a third one. So number one, chest pain or angina. Number two is heart failure. Number three is dizziness or syncope. So if they are passing out, they are having shortness of breath, or they are having angina that comes when they work and goes away when they 
take a rest. These patients, by definition, have critical aortic stenosis. And if your echo comes back saying the patient has mild to moderate aortic stenosis, again, as I said, you better confirm that with one step ahead, maybe doing an invasive study because your clinical impression is the most important in diagnosing the uh, the aortic stenosis. Now let's come to the examination. And I, what I really want to get to that is is the auscultation, the murmur, which can give you a lot of information. From the history, we know that if this patient's got angina, heart failure, or dizziness or passing out, it's got critical aortic stenosis. When you are listening to the aortic valve, really what you have to focus is two things. The murmur. The murmur, if it is a late peaking murmur, it's going to be a systolic late peaking murmur. And number two is absent second heart sound. This is all you need to remember for the murmur. Nothing else, you know, there could be turbulence, what's the grade of the murmur, where is the radiation, where is the location, all that does not, you know, it does matter, but by far the most weighted is, is this a late peaking murmur or is the second heart sound is absent? If you have these, one of these or both of these, again, by definition, is critical to severe aortic stenosis. So let's just break it down. How is that? So here is the small cartoon in picture one. This is a door. You see, somebody is trying to open the door. It's just from as if you are looking from, from the upside. So this door, let's imagine this door is all rusty. Never, never been opened before. The hinges are all rusted. And you are trying to open the door. You pull on the knob and you try to push it. You put small pressure, it does not open. You try to put more pressure, it does not open. You try harder, it does not open. You use your second hand to open it with a lot of pressure. Now the door opens, but very slowly. So this is an idea. If you kind of replicate to the severe aortic stenosis, the valve which is calcified, it's just like a door which is all rusted and hinged and calcified, and the poor left ventricle is trying to push the blood. So it generates pressure, the valve does not open. It tries to generate more pressure, the valve does not open. It keeps on going into systole. The left ventricle keeps on contracting, contracting to a point eventually the valve opens and the blood gushes into the aorta and causes a murmur. And since this happens late because the LV has to generate that amount of pressure, so this is a late peaking murmur. Now let's come to the, to the absent second heart sound. So if you have less come to the picture two here if you have a have a door which is very good somebody greased the hinges it's really good and you try to close it you put a little bit of pressure it's just going to smash here and make a loud noise and as we know the second heart sound is because of the closure of the aortic and the pulmonic valve poor pulmonic valve is a very thin frail structure does not contribute a lot towards the second heart sound murmur, but it's basically the aortic component. So imagine in this picture, the door is very free and you, you pull it, it bangs and makes a loud noise. That's your S2. Now try to do that same with this rusted door with the hinges that are all stuck. Number one, you'll have to try to put more pressure or you have to put more force to close it but even if you close it it's just going to look like something that is going to barely close it's not going to smash or make a loud noise 
and if you want to really want to close it you with one hand you will be holding on to the knob and then with the other hand you will put the lock in so that it does not again prop open so basically the idea is severe aortic stenosis the second heart sound is absent so if you have these two you have a late peaking murmur and if you have an absent second heart sound again as i said by definition is severe aortic stenosis echo as i said can help you i won't go into the gradients dimensionless index you know the turbulence and the pisa and all these things that you will read and learn in echo what i really want you to understand and know is uh, one of the ra the ratio is called 50 50. very easy to remember so 50 is your ejection fraction and another another 50 one is left ventricular and systolic dimension so if your left ventricular and systolic dimension is more than 50 millimeter so this means that the left ventricle is tr now starting to uh, fail as we talked about in heart failure it can one of the symptoms of heart failure or if the ef is dropping below 50. so if you have these two and there is severe aortic stenosis that would be another thing to worry about similarly you can put that on the aortic regurgitation as well for the most part we use it for aortic regurgitation not a whole lot in the uh, aortic stenosis because in aortic stenosis usually this there is concentric hypertrophy and the ejection pressure might be a little higher but sometimes you have aortic stenosis plus aortic regurgitation combination where this ratio of 50 50 will help you okay if the aortic regurgitation is severe and if that happens that patient needs to go for the valve replacement in that case last but not the least is your 